this absolute fool. This complete idiot. I'm about to dismantle the petty arguments this troglodyte made in their stupid, shitty video I barely watched 10 seconds of. I'll drive them off this platform. They'll never want to show their actually pretty cute face on this platform again. Yes, I've done it. This is perfect. <sighs> this is awesome. I mean, it's awful and shouldn't happen to anybody, but knowing that little old me said something that triggered someone so much that the only thing their little brain could muster as a shadow of a response was a baby version of a gay slur because they don't actually have the balls to write the full thing due to being afraid of Big Daddy YouTube banning them. Being on the receiving end of said fragile attempts to validate someone's unhealthy mindsets in an attempt to be seen is, of course, not for everybody, but I revel in it, in a way. I'm sure that says plenty about me, just as it does about them, but hey, at least I'm taking my medication. And that is why people comment, as I see it, to be seen. I mean, comments, nice or naughty, ultimately want acknowledgement and visibility uh, by the person of the thing that they are commenting on to recognize their existence in a real, honest-to-God, notice-me-senpai type situation. See, nice comments made in earnest support of someone's videos or art are by people who want to be seen as cheerleaders or even peers to provide encouragement and sometimes even critique to help that person grow and improve. I make these comments as a means of saying, I see you, random little person making the thing and trying their best even if it's a little rough around the edges, I love you. And that you're doing something that you want to do, even if I don't resonate with every little aspect of it. That last bit is important. You don't need to like every aspect of what somebody makes, but if there is something that you think could be approved on, it's important that you address it kindly and constructively to really show the creator that you care and not only do you like their work, but want to provide guidance in a way to help them get better. And then on the flip side, of course, there's mean comments by people who, on some level, uh, want to be like the people making these videos or art, but lack the confidence to do so due to fear of people like themselves interacting with their content. They are rather cowardly people who do not care much for the thoughts and emotions uh, of other people differing from their own. They seek out validations of these frequently ignorant opinions through negative forms of engagement because that's the only way that they are able to interact with people that they disagree with. They could simply just not say anything, and yet they do, which I feel proves my point, that they require external viewing to feel validated in their oftentimes rather bigoted opinions in order to feel good about themselves. Unlike the critique aspects of nice comments, mean comments can intrinsically not have this because their entire goal is not true criticism, it's simply self-validation. And I've always been fascinated by people like this because it has always made me wonder what kind of YouTube or what kind of internet do these people really want? Hi, this is Noah, who has been recording after two hours instead of beginning of the video, Noah, uh, like you were just seeing. I forgot to say subscribe, so please subscribe. Thank you. It's important to understand that the paragons of wit behind these comments are forged by the environments that they're from. 
whether it be real life or on the internet, they are ultimately a product of their environment. Some examples of these are shitty home lives or other real life environments, which are ultimately hostile to you and thus you learn and return that same energy. In a similar digital version, there are certain online spaces with edgy norms, shall we say. Many gamers have been forged in the racism fires of online voice chat in various video game lobbies where the views of calling or being called a variety of slurs uh, is very liberal. It's simply just something that happens. It's supposed to happen. It's part of the culture. It's an unwritten rule that you're supposed to call little Jimmy the N-word if he's going 2 and 14. Of course, some people don't like that that's being cracked down upon, you know, free speech and communism and all that, but I think it's for the best. Plenty of internet folk have a long-standing viewership towards drama and other internet catfights which have their views on how to call out and criticize things they disagree with very much molded by the language of these interactions. The infamous iDubbbz content cop videos were pinnacle entertainment and intellectual beatdown uh, back when I had no idea how to actually form thoughts and arguments. However, now that I am older and wiser, uh, boy howdy. At the end of the day, everything's a choice. Black people can choose to get offended by black slurs. Asian people can choose to get offended by Asian slurs. White people can choose to get offended by black slurs. And Tan Among You can choose to get offended by black slurs. There's a reason why Ian eventually apologized for a lot of his old work. I don't feel like a lot of this content represents me as a person, uh, at least not anymore. There was a time where it probably perfectly represented me because I was a nasty, apathetic, insecure person. Now, now that I don't feel like it represents me and I want to distance myself from it and keep it from, you know, indoctrinating more people. And for anyone who liked those videos, I, I you know, I want this video to be uh, an example and a lesson for you. You know, you can like content, but you can also think that it, it's irresponsible and it's hurting other people. So it just tap into that part of your brain that's saying like, oh, okay, it's like, it's probably not that important that this video stays online because truthfully, uh, I've seen it, I've experienced the content, but it's done a lot of damage. We, we can just let it, we can let it go. I applaud him for acknowledging it and changing. By the way, that should be nothing but celebrated. But unfortunately, there are a lot of people who do not grow up. And lastly, there are just kind of communities that purely exist to be antagonistic, mean, and bigoted. Some of this can be under the guise of disingenuous and fundamentally flawed critique by the pseudo-intellectual crowd. They really like to use logical fallacies and false information in order to twist information to their favor. There are plenty of videos very easily dismantling arguments by people like this. One of my favorites is this one by Sean, breaking down something by Sargon. I know, I can't believe Sargon would make such errors in logic. Another mode of this is sad, shitty commentary channels like basically anybody in the anti-woke or capital G gamer sphere, which are direct descendants of the infamous Leafy is here. For those of you who are blissfully unaware, of Leafy's existence, his sole mode of commentary on a person or a piece of work was basically insults and hate speech. No, but back on the shitty topic of feminism, I feel like everybody agrees with the fact nowadays that radical feminists are completely fucking retarded. And just in case you don't know what a radical feminist is, allow me to introduce you to one. This is Marva. She spends all day arguing with people on the internet. And on top of that, she also has type 7 diabetes and is directly related to the fucking boomer from Left 4 Dead 2. <laughs> And believe me, even though he's gone, from the comments on these video archives, there are very much people who think that his uh, delicate command of language was on point. And, uh, man, that's really unfortunate. And of course, there are communities who 
do not even remotely bother to hide it. It is just out in the open. Right-wing content sources, Manosphere dudes, some of the most popular streamers even, like Aiden Ross, have an entire platform because edgy youngsters and Manosphere man-children think it's funny to be an ignorant troll online in an attempt to actually cause legitimate damage to people's lives. W, chat, by the way, this is um Hassan's head moderator, chat. Put a W in the chat, we stole $8,000 from him. W, he needed that, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Plenty of people never get out of all of those environments. I was quite fortunate that learning critique was partially built into my career path, but many are not so lucky. I was taken apart and rebuilt over and over again through years of learning, proper language and thought processes to make sure that I could exist in society without some kind of caretaker. And it's sad in a way because it's very much possible to break out of these environments that we live in. It's just hard. I mean, so much of the lights that go into our eyes are intentionally designed by our tech overlords in such a way that make it actively difficult to stop and think and process the content that we are consuming. We are blasted with slop at such high speeds that we simply do not have time to properly think through what we are seeing. Our monkey brains just think, this is good or this is bad. If we're living off of gut reactions and we see something that we don't like or don't understand and we don't have the language to express that alongside the empathy to appreciate what someone was going for, then we're just going to type shit that is arrogant and unhelpful amongst other things. And that's really unfortunate for everyone involved. Couple that with the increasing homogeneity of the internet through hyper-specific echo chambers and an absolute decimation of third spaces in real life and the ability to interact with random people who think differently from you, who use language differently from you, it can be really hard to find that. And if you want to actively look for it, I mean, shit, it can be hard to even know what to look for. And for younger folks, coming onto the internet for the first time. I'm really gonna sound like a boomer here, but the privatization of the internet has really made it much more dangerous to be involved because the companies that control it uh, could not give any less of a shit about our intellectual enrichment. That is very much at the bottom of their priorities. We are simply dollar signs to them. And we would be basically the human batteries from the matrix if it weren't for the regulations that the government forces on them. I talk about my recovery as a formerly angry online loser in a previous video of mine, which some people had a bit of a reaction to. I'm actually quite thankful for it because it saved me a lot of time going out into the world searching for comment examples for this video. The same deal with my cyberpunk video. You all fell into my trap, my honeypot, galaxy brain. For real though, back to my original question. What kind of internet do these people want? Petty arguments of people throwing $10 words back and forth. People just thinking slurs back and forth. Races who can zing out a one-liner the fastest. To be completely honest, I don't think any of them really have an actual idea of what they want. Sure, from some of them, the fake smarty pants types. There's vague comments about free speech and proving yourself in the intellectual marketplace of ideas. They want a world where the smartest and the strongest come out on top and make the rules, which they want to be them. And then the rest of them, the trolls, who really just are content shouting slurs, one-liners, and general nonsense, seem to just kind of want the people who make the content that they do not like to vanish. See, I think what a lot of the fake smarty pants don't want to admit is that we already have this marketplace of ideas. It's called capitalism. They're just losing. It turns out if you curb disinformation, harassment, and hate speech, you make more money from advertisers. Who knew? Apparently not some people. People like Sargon, Aiden, and Leafy did not get demonetized or banned because this system is out to get them, uh, which it is because it doesn't like racism and harassment. They got nuked for not following the rules 
made by the dominant forces in their precious marketplace of ideas. Just debate yourself out of it, guys. Come on. And as for the trolls, if us F slurs disappeared, they would just cannibalize themselves, which I would enjoy. But what they don't realize is that that's the problem with inherently exclusionary modes of thought. You always have to have an enemy. And if you get rid of one, a new one always has to take its place until eventually they run out of people and start cannibalizing themselves like some kind of Ouroboros of cringe. Places like YouTube have the utmost potential to be a landscape of varied thought and expression and idea filled with people giving encouragement and critique to uplift and guide everybody to hone and refine their craft. And of course this exists in plenty of places on the site, but as I am realizing now, so many uh, rising stars, like yours truly, are much more vulnerable to such vitriol due to not having sizable and stable audiences to regularly drown out the irrational and sometimes uh, rather confusing hate. In fact, any minority creator of any size is automatically more vulnerable to harassment, and it is incredibly easy to see. I mean, I just went to a few channels run by some people who are not straight, white, cis men, uh, who were all over 100,000 subs, and I sorted the comments by new, and immediately I saw weird sexual comments towards women and transphobia. Splendid. See, I am somebody who is unaffected by the brain damage that seeps its way into my comment section due to my complicated past, but many are not, and I'm sure countless people have understandably given up before hitting their stride because of things like this. I mean, sometimes even larger creators choose to simply leave because of overwhelming harassment for completely ridiculous reasons. And that is why I want to offer my sage advice. I want to teach you, dear commenters, how to interact properly, like adults, using language that isn't this. And you, dear creators, I want to give you the right mindset in order to deal with some of the less unsavory folk. Because boy, there are some unsavory folk. Class time. The compliment sandwich. Have you heard it? Yes? No? Who cares? You're gonna learn it. In my eyes, this is the easiest and most straightforward structure to feedback and critique that anyone can learn. You start with a compliment, then you hit them with the critique of a thing that you don't like without using slurs, and then you bottom it off one more time with one more nice thing that you appreciate. This is a timeless method that works for basically anything. Now, you don't have to stick to this format exactly. But regardless, I think it's extremely important for some people to hear one thing that they like talked about in a kind and constructive manner before you hit them with something negative. People are just more likely to be receptive that way. It signals that you're actually engaging with their content and trying to critique in good faith and not just saying, I don't know, terrible video. A good rule of thumb is to just try to keep the amount of positive things you say either equal to or more than the amount of negative. The important thing about critique is that you want people to know what they're doing good, the things that you liked, the things that you appreciated, in addition to what you think could be improved. Many creators, regardless of specialty, can have a hard time noticing certain positive or negative aspects of their work. And that's why it's very important to have other people give their perspectives and highlight good things and things that could be improved to really improve your own self-analysis of what you want to make. While utilizing the base structure of the compliment sandwich or the one-to-one -one nice to naughty ratio, you have a few basic little rules to keep in mind while you're doing this just to make sure you stay on track. Number one, do not call people slurs. Controversial amongst some, I'm sure, but trust me on this one, people are more receptive to feedback when it's actual feedback and not slurs. I tried this in a meeting one time and maybe this was just the client, but it really didn't go over that well. Number two, be specific. 
don't just say, I didn't like your editing, or this point didn't make sense, or this video sucks. Elaborate on why, provide relevant examples. Let's do this by reworking some comments that I've gotten. This comment was a response to my cyberpunk video where I was critiquing and looking for more complex expressions of cyberpunkian themes within the cyberpunk video game. Now, instead of saying, want to know what's crazy, it's because you're looking on surface level. Why don't we say something like, I think you have interesting points on a few of the topics you mentioned, like the mechanical displays of advertising within the world or gender expression in relation to body modification technology. But I think the environmental and diegetic storytelling does a good job of providing more subtle context uh, to some of these examples that you mentioned. And I wish that you would have touched on them a bit more. Fabulous acknowledges my arguments and some of my points, but provides meaningful examples presented in earnest in what could be perceived as potential and valid critique. Amazing. This is another comment on my cyberpunk video. It was very popular. You should go watch it. I talked some about how I wish there was more meaningful choice throughout the game. And this person said, this reminds me of the person on Reddit complaining that choice in Baldur's Gate 3 is non-existent. Now that wasn't very helpful, was it? Instead of saying that, why don't we say something like, I can understand your perspective on how it can feel like much of the weights of the choice in the game is concentrated towards the endings, but I do feel like there are smaller moments throughout the main story and the side missions that can offer enough change and outcome to feel like they matter. Personally, I don't know if I would 100% agree with this, but I could see how for some people that could make enough of a difference. And I would be thrilled to have gotten this comment. Extremely valid. I do want to provide a real example that I got that is a good critique. This is one that makes a point that on my Woke People Online video, some of the tone and language of my video that I was using might not be as diplomatic as I had intended it to be. And looking back on it now, I think it's completely correct. I didn't strike the right balance I was hoping to between funny comments, empathy, and trying to convert people. The comment acknowledges that my content is solid and relatable, but the language and tone could be made more democratic and a bit less snarky. While I have small gripes with a point or two, I think this is excellent and I completely respect and appreciate this person letting me know that this is how they interpreted it because like I said before, sometimes creators can have a hard time seeing that when they're making something. In fact, this was helpful because I tried to keep this in mind as I was structuring this video. Thank you, good sir. I hope you're watching. Rule number three. I know two went on for a little long, but we are on three, I promise. Context and benefit of the doubt. YouTube, the net in general, I guess, is a platform filled with outsider artists, people who do not have formal training in writing, editing, production, you name it. And I love that, the fact that a random nobody like myself can have easy access to tools and technology to enable them to create work and share online their thoughts and ideas is amazing. And it's also very much important to keep in mind to tailor the level of feedback that you get and the level of insight that you want to provide to the perceived skill of the person that you are giving that feedback to. Does this person very much appear to be new to editing, but they are trying their best? Are they talking about something in a way that you don't quite understand, but you can see that they are very much trying to present it in earnest? Do they have solid editing and production skills, but they're inexperienced with writing and organizing their thoughts? Sometimes it can be hard to tell, but I think it's important to always give people the benefit of the doubt when you can see someone is trying to make something in earnest. I know more and more these days, the existence of high budget content and fancy videos produced by full blown agencies or companies is more and more abundant. But those I like to think are still outliers. The core is the average creative goober like yourself trying to make videos 
trying to make shit. And that shit's hard. That shit's hard in any feedback and perspective. Highly appreciated. And lastly, number four, just don't be rude. Just don't be rude. If you see something that to you is pure, unfiltered, concentrated garbage, no redeeming qualities in your eyes, just don't say anything. Close the tab. Move on. Step away. I see shit online that hurts my brain all the time, but I just move on. Sometimes I'll just have a little bit of a laugh in private, but who doesn't? I mean, let's be real here. But then I'll just go about my day. I don't want to be a dumb, insecure baby weirdo who brings people down for no reason. Except you, Justin. Fuck you. If you follow these simple guidelines, I assure you, your life and the lives of those you interact with will be significantly more enriched and make you look like somebody who should be allowed to roam free in society without some kind of caretaker. I want to give these tools to you to better yourself and to better your content because it enriches everyone involved. And I don't want to have to look at garbage all day. So make your shit better. And to my fellow content dudes, the makers and creators, if you get a comment that does not follow the guidelines that I have listed out, stand strong, ignore it. I hardly expect everybody to be like me and revel through waiting in toxic sludge, through design school and working in the monster that in the creative world I have been forged with iron skin harder than anybody should need, but it comes in handy. I have been through scathing critique with people with an absolutely incendiary command of language that any one of these donuts would kill to be able to do half as well. But understand that these people are not the kind of people that you want to win over. Most of them don't care about you. They don't care about your work. They don't care about your intention. They don't care about your improvement. They don't care about anything beyond feeling good about themselves and their rock solid worldviews. So just ignore them. Oftentimes that's the best strategy for people. Or, and this might be controversial, Fuck with them just a bit as a treat. It really makes you realize how harmless they actually are. And I don't mean like hit them with slurs or anything. I mean, give them a poke, give them a poke. And that poke can be so low effort. It is very, very easy to get them to say something even dumber than the first initial thing that they commented. For example, this guy wrote a very disingenuous comment on my cyberpunk video in response to the fact that I talked about postmodernism in regards to the birth of the cyberpunk genre. And then I just very simply questioned his rather brash and ignorant response to something that very clearly he isn't familiar with. And he hits me with this absolute gem and I am ecstatic. I've been making videos for what, six months now or something like that. And I've learned a lot. I've made a lot of garbage and I've made a lot of imperfect content, but I'm proud of the stuff that I've made. And I am extremely appreciative of people who have taken the time to nicely point out things that could be improved upon, things that they appreciate, things that I do well. And again, if the audio is fucked up for the third fucking time, for the third goddamn video in a row, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. I'm also, of course, extremely grateful for all of the angry man children who comment on my videos to help give me content for more wonderful videos like this one. Originally, I just kind of started doing this as a means of trying to hate myself less because I don't like the sound of my own voice and I don't like looking at myself. So this was kind of an immersion therapy by dropping this long ass content in the editing bay and trying to not go blind and deaf. But overall, this has been a pretty rewarding and fun experience. And it's been almost therapeutic to put all of these thoughts that I have in my brain into visual and audio form amongst all sorts of different topics. And you know, who fucking knows what I'm going to end up doing here. I don't want to just be a video essay guy. 
But I guess thanks to the people who watch my stuff uh, and happy new year. If this is not out before the, no way, if this is out after the end of the year, God, I'm so tired. I've run, I'm, I'm on like, I'm on like fucking three hours of sleep, dude. I got, I adopted two cats and they're little guys and they got one eye each and they're, they're so, they're so much energy and they're, they eat my lights and fuck, but they're cute and I love them. I just want to fucking kill them and myself sometimes. I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about anymore. This light that I'm hiding behind my chair is really bright. I'm really hungry. I'm going to go eat and take a shit. Not necessarily in that order. Also get fucked Henry Kissinger, it's about goddamn time.